and you do have a right to be rich. Whatever may be said in praise of poverty, the fact remains it is not possible to live a really complete or successful life unless one is rich. We cannot rise to our greatest possible height in talent or soul development unless we have plenty of money. In order to unfold the soul and to develop talent, we must have many things to use, and we cannot have these things unless we have the money to buy them with. You know, I'll frequently share just those first few lines with an audience in a live seminar, and then I'll ask for a response. And sometimes I don't get a response. I get an immediate reaction from some people, and they'll say, well, I just don't believe that. What about Mother Teresa? She didn't have any money. Well, the truth is, Mother Teresa was one of the richest women on the planet. She was like royalty. She didn't even have to carry any money. She had the ability to walk into the executive office of any of the large companies in the world, and they'd give her virtually whatever she asked. She didn't need her own plane. She had an Air Force at her beck and call. Now, think about this for a moment. She really understood how to live the rich life. Now, the fact that she worked amongst poverty, she was attempting to raise their consciousness. The lady had the right idea, but there's no way that you'll ever convince me or anyone else who has really studied this material that Mother Teresa was not rich. People develop in mind, soul, and body by making use of things. And society is so organized that people must have money in order to become the possessor of things. Therefore, the basics of all human advancement must be the science of getting rich. I want you to go back with me mentally. I want you to go way back until we were living in a very crude manner and we were probably out looking for our foodstuffs with a bow and arrow. And you and I were neighbors and we would go hunting together. And I always admired the way you made your arrows. They were so straight and true. When mine always had a hook in them, I would fire my arrow on, woo, it would go off in the wrong direction. I loved hunting, but I just didn't know how to cut arrows. You knew how to make arrows, but you just didn't like to hunt. One day, I went over and asked you if you wanted to go hunt, and you said, no, nah, I don't want to go. I said, well, you need some meat. And you said, I know, but I just don't feel like it. And one of us come up with a brilliant idea. I said, wait a minute. How would it be if I do your hunting for you and you make my arrows for me? And we cut a deal. Trade and commerce was established in our mind. So I would get arrows from you and I would bring you meat. Then one day I went over and I wanted some more arrows and you said, no, I don't need any meat. I said, well, give me some arrows anyway. No, I don't need the meat. When I need the meat, I'll give you some arrows and you can give me the meat. Well, you see, that idea didn't work very well. So then we come up with something we called money. And I'd say, listen, let this represent something that we can use in exchange. You give me this when you want meat. I give you this when I want arrows. Now, I know that's not the way it started, but it was something along that line. But you see, money is an idea. Richness is a concept. It's a consciousness. The object of all life is development. Everything that lives has an inalienable right to all the development it is capable of attaining. Each of us has a right to life. This means the right to have the free and unrestricted use of all the things that may be necessary to our fullest mental, spiritual, and physical unfolding. In other words, our right to be rich. Now, as we go through this program, I'm not going to speak of riches in a figurative way. To be really rich does not mean to be satisfied or contented with a little. You shouldn't be satisfied with a little if you're capable of using and enjoying more. The purpose of nature is the advancement and development of life. Every individual should have all that can contribute to the power, elegance, beauty, and richness of life. 
Did you notice how Rhonda Byrne captured that in The Secret? How she just seemed to know what would fit and what would meet the consciousness of the masses. Well, that's what she was talking about. Every individual should have all that can contribute to the power, elegance, beauty, and richness of life. Doesn't that feel good when you hear those words? Every individual. That's you. You should have all that can contribute to the power, elegance, beauty, and richness of life. When you own all you want for the living of all the life you are capable of living, you are rich. You cannot have all you want without plenty of money. It's absolutely essential if you're going to live the good life. Most people don't get what they want. They get what they settle for. Go on into any shop, any department store, and just watch the way people shop. They're not picking out things they want. They're looking at the price tag of things. And sometimes they'll look at the price tag and put it down very quick. You'd think it was hot. It was going to burn them. We should look and get what we want and then just go and pay for it. You've got to have the money to do that, though. Life has advanced so far and become so complex that even the most ordinary man or woman requires a great deal of wealth in order to live in a manner that even approaches completeness. You naturally want to become all that you're capable of becoming. This desire to realize innate possibilities is inherent in human nature. Success in life is becoming what you want to be. Earl Nightingale put this very, very well. He said, success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. If you think how perfect that is, it's the progressive realization. In other words, you are continually moving ahead. This beautiful ideal is unfolding of a worthy ideal. And it's not that you're worthy of it. It's worthy of you. You're trading your life for it. Now, Wallace Waddles is saying essentially the same thing. He said success in life is becoming what you want to be. You can become what you want to be only by making use of things. And you can have the free use of things only as you become rich enough to buy them. Therefore, an understanding of the laws of the universe and the science of getting rich is the most essential of all knowledge. There's nothing wrong in wanting to get rich. But I think a good part of our population has been raised with the idea that there's virtue in poverty and there's some sin in great wealth. And that is not true. There's no virtue in poverty, none at all. That's not how God meant us to live. We were endowed with rich resources. We have more power within us than we'll ever probably use in our lifetime. So the idea of living in poverty as a virtuous thing is absurd. Where did that idea come from? Who originated that? How far back would we have to go? And yet there's still people believe that today. An understanding of the laws of the universe and the science of getting rich is the most essential of all knowledge. And like Waddle said, there's nothing wrong in wanting to get rich. You should want to be very rich. Understand this. Money can only be used for two things, just two things. One, it's to make you comfortable. And the other is to be able to extend the service that you offer far beyond your own presence. Now, I don't know about you, but I operate with some pretty healthy ideas. I have some big ideas. I want to build our business and provide our service much better than we're already doing it. And to do that, we're going to need more money. And so I have found the secret to getting rich, and it's locked up in the science of getting rich. The desire for riches is really the desire for a richer, fuller, and more abundant life. And that desire is praiseworthy. The person who does not desire to live more abundantly is uncommon. The individual who does not desire to have money enough to buy all that is desired may not be living to their full potential. There's three motives for which we live. We live for the body, the mind, and the soul. Now, no one of these is better or holier than the other. 
although there's a good segment of the population that believe that there is. I think they're wrong. They have never really studied life in any depth. Each is desirable, and neither the body, mind, or soul can live fully if one of the others is cut short of full life and expression. It's not right or noble to live only for the soul and deny mind and body. It is wrong to live for the intellect and deny body and soul. I think we're all acquainted with the loathsome consequences of living for the body and denying both mind and soul. We see that real life means the complete expression of all that a person can give forth through body, mind, and soul. We cannot be fully happy or satisfied unless our bodies are living fully in every function and unless the same is true of our mind and our soul. Whenever there is an unexpressed possibility or an unperformed function, there's an unsatisfied desire. Desire is possibility seeking expression or function seeking performance. Wants are in the conscious mind, and you build the picture of what you want. As you turn the want over to the subconscious, as you turn that idea and let it slip into the treasury of the subconscious mind, that's when desire begins to form. Now, the more energy you give to that idea in the subconscious, the stronger the desire becomes. The desire is the effort of the unexpressed possibility within, seeking expression without in your results through your action. It's desire that fires you into action. It's such a beautiful concept. Desire is possibility seeking expression or function seeking performance. A person cannot live fully in body without good food, comfortable clothing, warm shelter, and freedom from excessive toil. Rest and recreation are also necessary to one's physical life. You know, we talk about excessive toil. You were probably raised with the idea that I was raised with, and we were raised that way because that's the way our parents were raised, and they were raised that way because the way our grandparents were raised, and we're raised with the idea that you go to work to earn money. Do you know that working is the very worst way to earn money? We shouldn't go to work to earn money. We should go to work for satisfaction. Our work, how we spend our days, is supposed to cause us to feel fulfilled. You provide service to earn money. And as you dig deeper into the secret science of getting rich, as you watch the secret over and over again, you're going to realize that every person on the secret is communicating that idea. They're doing what they love, and they're earning millions of dollars providing service. A person cannot live fully in mind without books and time to study them without opportunity for travel and observation, or without intellectual companionship. I don't think there's anything that will equal a mastermind group that's humming along the way it's supposed to work. That's where you're bringing like minds together for the building of an idea. It's such a phenomenal way to live. Let me share that again. A person cannot live fully in mind without books and time to study them, without opportunity for travel and observation, or without intellectual companionship. Just think, when you can sit down with someone, and you can almost talk in shorthand to them because you're of like mind, you're operating on the same frequency, think of how fulfilling that is. And he goes on to point out, to live fully in mind, one must have intellectual recreations and must be surrounded by all the objects of art and beauty one is capable of using and appreciating. To live fully in soul, an individual must have love, and the expression of love is often frustrated by poverty. Our highest happiness is found in the bestowal of benefits on those we love. I found that love is resonance. You love another person when your intellect is in harmony with them. You enjoy sharing and communicating the same ideas. Your feelings are in sync. You don't even have to talk. You just share vibrations. 
you share feelings. And of course, if your intellect and emotions are in sync, then you're going to have a great physical relationship. But you can fall in love with an idea. In fact, Alfred Adler, the great psychologist, put it very well when he said, I am grateful to the idea that has used me. Now, Wallace Waddle said, our highest happiness is found in the bestowal of benefits on those we love. Love finds its most natural and spontaneous expression in giving. Why is that? Well, it's because you're in harmony with the law. You're in harmony with the law of circulation. You're in harmony with the law that Emerson referred to as the law of law, the law of cause and effect. As you give, the universe will reward you. What you put out comes back. Action and reaction are equal and opposite. It's the most natural and spontaneous expression in giving. When we have nothing to give, we cannot fill the place as a spouse or parent or as a citizen or as a human being. It is in the use of material things that a person finds full life for one's body, develops the mind, and unfolds the soul. It is, therefore, of supreme importance to be rich. It's perfectly right that you should desire to be rich. And the beautiful part of this program, the Secret Science of Getting Rich Edition, is that not only are you getting the philosophical, the intellectual, and the spiritual aspect of living the rich life, we've even built into it the opportunity for you to earn millions of dollars. So you see, it's perfectly right that you should desire to be rich, and we want to help you do it. If you are a normal man or woman, you cannot help doing so. It is perfectly right that you should give your best attention to the science of getting rich because it is the noblest and most necessary of all studies. If you neglect this study, you are derelict in your duty to yourself, to God, and to humanity. You can render God and humanity no greater service than to make the most of yourself. Now, what do you know about yourself? Do you know that self is perfect? Do you know that the essence of you is perfect? If you could dig right into the core of your being, it's perfect. Brandeis one time pointed out that there is a spark of idealism within every human being, and it can be fanned into flame, and it'll bring extraordinary results. I believe that you and I have an obligation to fan that spark, to really begin to live, to share this with everyone we come in contact with. And don't think for a second that you're not able to share it. You are able to share it. You're going to get a good feeling by sharing this. You're going to like yourself better. This truly is the science of getting rich. And you truly do have the right to be rich. And now before we're stimulated with the questions to see just how much we've grasped of this particular lesson, let's take a look again at what Wallace Waddle said. He said, a person's right to life means his right to have the free and unrestricted use of all the things which may be necessary to his fullest mental, spiritual, and physical unfolding. In other words, his right to be rich. You know, as you think about that, it makes you feel good inside. I like the idea that I have a right. It's my God-given right that I have the right to be rich. That's a marvelous concept. Think of all the things that you can have, the lifestyle that you can have when you're rich. And I'm not just talking about rich and potential now. I'm talking about having the money to buy the things that you really want to buy. Let's get down and get really where it's at. If you want to have a beautiful automobile, get it. If you want to have a home in Gibraltar and another in Switzerland, go ahead and buy them. Why not? Life is short. And so far as we know, you only get one bite at the apple. So let's really live. Now let's take a look at the questions that come with this session on this segment of The Secret Science of Getting Rich. John Wystrom wants you to have fun doing this. He is the genius that is producing and engineering this program. And he's right. You should have some fun with the questions. Now, here's the first question, and this is a tough one. 
When you viewed The Secret for the first time, what was the first thing you wanted to change in your life? And I know the first time I watched it, it set something on fire that's still burning. It was incredible. I absolutely love it. Pay attention to that question. And if you got a pen and a pad handy, write it down. And here's the second question. Is it right to be content with poverty? If not, why not? That is a very, very good question. Now here's another one, and you're gonna love this. This is a beauty. Explain what a complete life is and show how riches are essential to complete living. Oh, that's a good one. That's gonna get you thinking. Now here's the last one, and then we're gonna get involved in another exercise. In which department of your life, body, mind, or soul, do you feel the greatest lack? And understand, your results are going to guide you to the right answer. Take a look at your results and be honest. See, that was the best thing that ever happened to me. Ray Stanford, he caused me to really look at my results. I was not happy. I was not a happy person. I was always broke, I never had any money. And I just wasn't the healthiest guy in town. And he said, Bob, you don't have to live this way. He said, quit giving energy to the fact that you're not happy. Find someone that's happy and emulate their lifestyle. Understand that money can't talk, but it can hear. And if you will call it, it'll come. That's very well illustrated in The Secret. And he said, if you get your thinking right, you're going to be in a wonderful vibration and you're going to live in a healthy body. But you've got to look at it and be honest. And I was very honest looking at my results. And I had to take responsibility. And then and only then could I change them. And I did. And I am. And I'm going to keep doing it.